How's it going everyone? This is Mitchell Mander here and welcome to another review of the Bleach Thousand Year Blood War series. Today we're going to be covering episode 2 in today's review. And Waco Mundo has been taken over by an unknown force. Who is responsible for this? What's going on in Soul Society? And oh hey, look, Nell's back. So yeah. Before I get into this episode review, I just want to say if you're new to the channel, be sure to like, subscribe, and hit that notification bell. It'd be pretty awesome if you'd do that. Anyways, let's talk about this episode. Now, I want to mention really quickly that we got the first opening and ending for the Bleach Thousand Year Blood War anime in today's episode. And I like both of them. I don't think that they're as good as previous openings or endings for Bleach, but they're still solid nonetheless. The visuals in the opening are really nice. It's just nice to, ha to see that Bleach has another opening and ending song. It's been so long, so yeah, I definitely appreciate it. But overall, they're pretty nice. It's just hard because Bleach has so many good opening and endings. But, you know, maybe this will grow over time and, and ends up becoming one of my favorites. Now, the main premise of this episode is that Waco Mundo has been taken over by an unknown force. We know it's the Quincy's, but to everybody else, it's an unknown force. Now, Haribel has been the leader and ruler of Waco Mundo because number one and number two of the Espada were killed and Aizen's been in prison, so she's basically the ruler by default. But she's absolutely no match for this unknown force. And I want to say that the anime expanded the scenes here and actually showed her getting defeated, which I thought was pretty nice. Meanwhile, the Soul Society is actually dealing with the aftermath of what happened. They have a funeral for the lieutenant under Yamamoto, and presumably all the others that were killed as well because Squad 1 basically got decimated. And so they're holding the funeral for them, which I thought was a really nice scene. It was a really quiet scene. I think it was really well done overall. Now Ichigo and the others overheard this because the two Soul Reapers that they saved got a call and they basically were informed about this. So They're all kind of saddened by these events, so Ichigo decides to go parole and just go around town looking for hollows, and that's when Nell shows up out of nowhere, out of the sky, and tackles Ichigo into the ground and tells him about what happened to Waco Mundo. And thus, once again, Ichigo and his pals are off on another trip to Waco Mundo. This time around, Orihime is helping them out, and Uryu is actually not joining them this time since uh, he is an enemy to the Arankar and Hollows, so yeah, he doesn't want to help out, so yeah, he's out at the moment. But anyways, I head over to Waco Mundo thanks to Kisuke. But anyways, overall, I thought this was a really good episode. The quality between episode 1 and 2 is pretty much the same. I think my favorite thing from the Thousand Year Blood War anime is probably the lighting. Because the lighting is just, like, fantastic. Like, in every single scene. Like, the characters and the lighting on them, it just looks fantastic. Like, when Haribel was captured by the Quincy's and she's chained up, that's a really nice touch with the lighting there. It looks really nice. And in other scenes, like, Waco Mundo looks really nice now. Like, I liked it in the original series, but Waco Mundo looks really good in this series. And also, the Garganta is a lot different in the new series compared to the old. Which, I gotta say, is a definite upgrade. It's not that the original series was bad. It just looks really cool with the new series. It just looks new and updated. Also, once again, this series has proven not to be holding back when it comes to the violence and gore within it because holy crap <laughs> yeah Yuhaba just literally just kills two of his subordinates including the um Arankar that we uh met last time Eber and it looks like he's trying to recruit some Arankar to get on his side as is one of the reasons why they're invading um Waco Mundo but the way he killed them it's just crazy because he already took off the arm of one of them and then he just blows their head right off. He does the same thing to Eber, and he just kills them. Shows uh, how much he uh, respects and uh, cares for his uh, subordinates. Not really too caring of a guy, it seems. They just need to fit his own means. If not, then if he's dissatisfied, he'll just kill you. So yeah, I like how that's portrayed now, obviously, in Waco Mundo. All the characters that were killed there, it's actually super brutal. <laughs> to the point where Ichigo is actually covering up Nell's eyes, which I thought was a pretty nice little moment there. But overall, I think that um, this series is doing a really good job, and it's not holding back when it comes to this stuff. Another thing I thought was pretty neat 
was the fact that the title of this episode was on that Quincy's uh, severed arm. I thought that was a really nice touch. It's actually a really brutal way to show off the episode title. So I'm wondering if this is kind of how they're going to do every, every single episode. Because in the original Bleach series, whenever they had the title cards for the episodes, they were all unique and different from one another. So I'm wondering if they're going to be doing the same thing here where it's like showcasing something that actually happened within the episode and the title of the episode is going to be within that sequence, whatever it may be. Whether it's a severed arm or something else going on. I don't know, but I think that's really cool, and I hope that this continues throughout the rest of the series. <laughs> but anyways, guys, that's all I got for this episode review. So overall, another solid episode. I'll probably give it like a 9 or 9.5 out of 10. Still a very solid episode, and so far I'm really enjoying the Thousand Year Blood War series. So in the comment section down below, I'd like to hear your thoughts. What do you think of this episode? What do you think of the quality of the series? And if you're someone that read the manga... What are your thoughts, you know, reading the manga back then versus watching the actual scenes from the manga being adapted now? Post your thoughts in the comment section down below. And yeah, if you're new to the channel, be sure to like, subscribe, and hit that notification bell. And guys, have a good day or night wherever you're at, and I'll see you all in the next one. Bye.